Hi, this is Priyanka and I welcome you all to Swijan Wednesday webinars. For those who are attending for the first time, this is a community initiative by Swijan Technologies. As a part of this initiative, we will host webinars every alternate Wednesday. We will have speakers from different domains who will talk about subjects like front-end technologies, UI UX, mobile apps, media, entrepreneurship, community building, digital marketing, and many more. Today we have Himanshu Khanna with us. Himanshu is the founder and chief design officer at Sparklin, a young branding and design studio. He has over 12 years of experience and has worked with companies like Goodyear, Addison, Paytm, Smirnoff, Nick, and Gainturk. He has also founded India's first job, job platform for creatives called Pixel Jobs. Currently, he is working on his upcoming venture, Seven Days of Work, which is a network for creative professionals. So, in the first 45 minutes of the webinar, Himanshu will be talking about 10 steps to improve user experience and why better user experience is critical for digital products and services. The last 15 minutes will be for a Q&A session. You can ask questions either by speaking into your microphone or by typing in the chat box below. Over to you, Manju. Hi, guys. Uh, I'm sorry I've been a little late. I've been trying to connect and make this thing work. Um, so if you try connecting to such software which you don't use on an everyday basis, you'll understand how important it is user experience and you know how it's relevant to kind of take cues from everyday life and make these things work. Okay, uh, I hope I'm really audible here. Okay. Uh, so when I was asked to kind of present this webinar, I was really perplexed what can I really talk about user experience. It's such a, such a wide field. So I thought uh, let's try and make it a, a you know, small uh, session full of dope where we all can gain something out of it if you know not everything else uh, so i've tried to structure the session in such a way that you can you can understand and kind of you know uh, uh, basically make use of some information that is being shared here uh, and take it forward in the way you want so starting forward we are going to talk about 10 steps to improved user experience uh, why 10 steps because uh, I think it sounds like a fairly round number and it's good to know 10 things which can you know quickly use uh, improve your user experience. So what really is user experience? Uh, we all have tried to define it in different ways. Uh, so this is how Wikipedia spells it. Uh, it's basically hey Manchu, how hi. a person feels about using a product system or service. Hi. I'm sorry to interrupt you Manchu. Yeah, you are very much audible, but yeah. you have, uh, we still can't see your screen, so you have to select that option and so that everybody can see your presentation as well, right? Okay, okay, yeah. Yeah, One. now we can see right. it. Yes. Now you can see it? Yes, okay. perfect. Yeah, sorry. Thank you. Please continue. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so according to Wikipedia, user experience is basically how a person feels about using a product, system, service, and you know, so on. Uh, it's great to define in, in the most technical way possible, yes. But do you make sense of it? Do I make sense of it? At least I don't. So let's try and put it in, you know, let's try and change a few words and understand what could be user experience and where can we use it. So this is how we try to humanize it. So it's, it's how a person feels about using a website. So when I go to a certain google.com, how do I feel about it? When I use it on an everyday basis, how do I feel about it? When I use a Twitter app on my iPhone, how do I feel about it? When I play a certain temple run on my iPad, how do I feel about it? Those feelings on the whole is user experience. You like it, you don't like it, it's fun, it's, it's tough, it's difficult, it makes me challenge, it challenges me all the time, you know, those kind of things is user experience. Uh, just to just to quickly make you understand how will these 10 things be uh, right from the start uh, I'm hoping the first 
the first point would is going to be really easy and all it takes is you know lots of brainstorming and thinking and all that which you can do amongst your team and your you know near and dear ones it doesn't really need you to have a technical expertise but as we keep moving forward towards the 10th step uh things are going to get a little difficult they they will need you to be a little technical with your approach not a little actually a lot so every time we talk about user experience this is this is like the biggest question out there who am i talking to uh i really need to know who am i talking to right now you know i'm facing the exact problem which every other guy working on a ux project would face i can talk to you but i can't hear you right now so i wouldn't even get to know who am i talking to but then i have a lot of parameters around my project which make me help or you know it helps me define uh the different users i have so specify the user who where why why would someone be using this particular application or a website or why would someone be playing this where would they play would would they be sitting in their you know washroom and playing temple run just to get a feel of running while they're just sitting out sitting down there who would it be would it be would it be some corporate professional trying to wait for his cab when he's playing a certain game on his phone would it be a a, a housewife trying to book a certain ticket would it be a teenager trying to get admission in a certain college using his mobile phone what would it be why is it needed what is it all those kind of things must be really you know going on in your mind so one problem we we tend to make when we are working and defining our user for a certain project we think we are the user or or this best friend of mine he is the user or this person i know in the office that you know he is the user uh so that is where we tend to have a certain bias in all practical terms it's called curse of knowledge uh why is it called curse of knowledge because when we know certain someone really well we tend to have a certain bias in our head towards what we think they want try doing this ex- experiment with all the people you know and you would realize what i mean for example i am a big movie buff so there is this movie i watched recently which i really loved according to me if i tell you these five things about the movie you will be able to guess the name of the movie so i think you can see these five things in front of you on the screen uh i don't know how many of you can actually see the movie if if you are able to guess the movie you know do one thing just go out there and type type out the name once i'm done with it i would like to know how many could actually guess this movie no it's it's definitely not finding you know uh and if you did think of finding emo you would know what bias stands for if you are not able to still find the movie you know you, you can just email me and i could tell you obviously there is google so you can find out second easy very normal thing to do is try and be human you we have to understand that all the websites games and apps which work on are working on machines they are not working on something on things which have feelings or which can interact in the most you know emotional way possible so if we can somehow make them feel little human that's that's like you know a pleasure to have for example if you go on 37 signals website there is this very small uh, you know thing on the top uh, there which basically take the day which is today and add happy to it so if today is wednesday it will say happy wednesday you should go on 37 signals and try it it's a very small thing doesn't really help anywhere but yes it does it does make me feel a little better when i see it. uh so flickr the older version of flickr used to do it everyone every time someone logs into flickr they'll try and greet them in you know different languages of the world so this coming from a machine and on a very random scale kind of you know makes you feel a little good about it makes you connect in a certain way how you connect to different people add humor i mean this is something we all need in our life right we all want to laugh we all want to smile we all want something which is pleasant so why not use a body copy or a certain terminologies which are really going to help you in making you feel lighter better you know those kind of things 
so again going back to flicker the older version every time the flicker you know would go down the servers wouldn't work flicker would show up a message called flicker is having a massage i mean we all know flicker is not really having a massage but just reading this makes you feel good doesn't it uh the older yahoo form had this nice thing about it if you happen to you know choose a future date there which is like 2018 it would ask you this funny question are you really from the future so we all know in our rational sense that all this doesn't really make sense but just reading it kind of at least you know makes you feel a little witty about it this this is like one of the most important points they would ever be in terms of uh, user experience design you have to cut and remove anything and everything which you think is not needed right now and when i say right now i mean right now i'm not saying five years hence or 10 years hence or five down five days down down the road no what do you think you don't need right now and think hard talk to people discuss this is like this can really help you uh a couple of days ago there was this uh, discussion on a facebook forum again about ux where a certain gentleman and asked uh that what can we do to kind of you know remove the confirm password from a sign up form so taking the same example this the one on the left hand side is what we have been using forever choose a password and then retype password or sometimes it's called confirm password it's basically used so that you know one you remember your password second you don't make you know typos and you know 10000 other things but in today's age do you really need that do you really need to type your password all over again in in another field why not have just one one place for password and have a checkbox if someone wants to read the password they can just you know check the box and read the password they can remember it just in case they make a typo and you know the password doesn't work the next time there's something called forgot password then there's this mobile uh, pattern where you can show the password as you type so as i'm typing the password the, the last letter i typed is visible and soon enough it changes to something which i can't see then there's a concept called forgive and learn we need to understand that everyone who's using is human everyone who is using our website app or game is going to be human as humans we are bound to make mistakes sometimes conscious sometimes subconscious but do you think we really need to go through punishments once we make mistakes i mean i don't think so just because i happen to you know uh, choose a wrong setting and now suddenly my wifi is not working on the phone why do i need to be cursed and why do i need to go all the way you know travel to a certain apple center understand from them why the wifi is not working when all i did was change the setting so that is where most of the systems most of the machines most of the applications most most of such things would have something called preset all settings it's like the miracle button out there which which will make it all restored to the original settings how things have to work most of the things start working as soon as soon as you press this same goes for web apps uh so personally speaking i don't know of too many web apps which allow me to kind of you know uh, go back on the mistake i made but then there is dropbox so if on a certain facebook i happen to delete a, a comment now they have introduced something called undo it stays there for some time likewise on dropbox you have something called so deleted files so yes i did delete it but maybe i wasn't really meant to or maybe i just realized i need that file now so the, you just go back and retrieve the same file it's like you know i made a mistake and now the system is letting uh, you know is forgiving me most of the times what had happened is uh, out of these subconscious mistakes a lot of people studying how users are experiencing their product have come up with better product analogies uh, i don't know if you guys know about how twitter has evolved over the years uh but that is something i would skip because that is a very very common analogy omni box is something which we use in chrome it's the space where we type our urls the www and dot coms and all that so people at chrome happen to realize that lots of people are actually typing all those things in the search box that is where they combine the search box and the url space and it's called omni box today 
uh, the initial idea of SMS was not to allow users to message each other. The idea was from you know to to have a message which is coming out from a mobile operator to you. It was more of a notification that the network might be down or the network is finally up or the network is working at full speed or you know you're gonna be charged for a certain time and then they realize that people are using the same service to send messages to each other and thus came the SMS. Uh, this is one of one of the most I would say easy way to get people to become part of your your product family or your service family. See for certain someone has taken taken or gone through the pain to realize and learn something about you. Uh, it's it's almost like you know trying to learn a new language. If I have taken the pains of for three to six months to learn let's say German, I would want to speak in German with someone. I would want to go to Germany and you know try and try out those skills. If I've tried uh, for a month to learn how to swim, there's, there's no way that I would not want to swim after that. I would want to go to a swimming pool almost every week and you know uh, make it happen. The same way if, if there's a slight learning curve attached to your products or services and people happen to go through it, there's a good chance that they kind of start owning that experience. One good example being swipe to delete which was great till iOS 6 because most of us who use uh, iOS devices had already gone through the learning curve of left to right swipe to delete certain something in most of the apps. And then came iOS 7 which was trying to innovate and rethink everything possible. People still haven't really come up with uh, a reason why they shifted the left to right swipe to right to left swipe. So in iOS 7 you have to swipe right to left to delete certain something. Uh, it, it is a possible UX issue because once you once you start, uh, swipe right to left, your finger or your thumb is on the extreme left side, not on the on the right side where your delete or trash button is, where it would start making sense. And because of this change in the learning curve, lots of people actually thought that uh, Apple has the taken this whole thing out, this whole gesture out of the iOS 7. They wouldn't even realize to you know swipe it the other way. And if you go on Google and you know search about it, there are you know many forums which are talking about the same thing that this delete is still possible in iOS 7, you just have to swipe the other way. Another thing Apple did was uh, instead of pull down to refresh, which was a normal norm in Apple and iOS devices, now they slowly they are trying to change it to pull down to search which is cutting like we mentioned in the other point cutting away a whole scene of a uh, whole screen of search uh, from the whole uh, experience which is which is a fantastic thing then uh, there is there is something called automate user inputs so think of think of all the paper forms which have lengthy fields to work on think of a of a passport form or a or a you know uh, or a college admission form there are so many fields to input how about we could automate some of those fields based on uh, based on the other fields you are you know adding information to one of a great example is uh, used by you know most of the e-commerce websites and uh, like shown here by github so what github do does is as soon as you start typing the card number it realizes that you're using a certain kind of card be it mastercard american express or visa and it just automatically chooses the same card which kind of saves you from that one extra click with or one extra thought process which you would have to go through. Similarly most of the websites I, in US are using this. As soon as you type in your zip code there which in India is known as pin code, they automatically fill in your city and state which is a fantastic thing. You're saving two fields and two thought processes there. Uh, Gmail, Google, these these products are doing it on almost everyday basis. As soon as you start typing something, it auto suggests based based on your history with them. If you've been using you know three to four certain email IDs together as a bunch, it would try and understand this pattern and take it forward. If you using uh, you if you use the wrong email ID here, the pattern would 
intelligently understand and even suggest that maybe did you mean you know the other one, not this one, which is a great thing. Another great thing with Gmail does is if you have the word attach in your email, it would it would you know if and you've forgotten to uh, add the attachment, it would actually send you a notification before sending the email. We think you had to attach an email with this. It's missing. Do you want to attach it now before sending it? You know. So systems can be made to automate things and you know seem intelligent and help the user. Then of course is the whole idea of you know having having consistent experience all throughout. So what do you mean by consistent experience? So one we have to understand that there are different devices in the world today. People are not just consuming your web app or you know a certain application uh, or a game only on desktop. People have switched to tablets. People have switched to different kinds of phones, smartphones. So now, how do you make them consume the same information and feel that they are the same? This information belongs to the same entity altogether, the same brand, the same family. So this whole concept is called responsiveness, which is a little technical. All you, I mean, technical. I won't get into the technical side of it, but this is something which should today become a norm. If you're working on a certain uh, web application, you you must make sure that it it is smooth and clean on all possible devices around you or all possible you know uh, known devices around you or you or your users devices another uh, example of consistency here in india is for example the the brand indigo so if you look on the left is the screenshot of their website if you look on the right is the screenshot of their uh, application and you i mean i hope you can see the consistency in their fonts the way it's written, the kind of color palette, the way they are actually talking, even the tonality, uh, which is written there, even the arrow marks, the logo, and those kind of things. Which this is again digital, but they are going one step ahead and taking the same consistency into the real world as well, right? And then the last thing, which is not really the necessity, but then even the desserts or the cakes or the delicious pastries we happen to eat and enjoy are not really necessities, right? We have stopped eating food for the healthy or the necessity side of it. We don't con eat food off late just because, you know, we have to survive. Most of us are eating food which is delicious. Most of us are going ahead and paying extra for things which make us feel better, the enhancers, the delighters. So how can you have or introduce such delighters in your projects, in your products, in your service? So look at this. I don't know if this particular thing would make sense as of now, but look at it hard. So this is a delighter by Chrome. So the idea is very simple. Every time a sound is kind of you know triggered on any certain page, that particular tab would show uh, a sound sound icon for that particular moment. This is great for for a scenario where imagine you have some 40 tabs, which is a very common thing with me. And in one of those tabs, a song is playing. It's just so difficult to understand which I mean, in which tab is the song playing. With the speaker icon there, it's going to be super easy, isn't it? On a similar on a similar style, SoundCloud uses the same scenario. Every time you play a song on SoundCloud. The title bar changes and is uh, you know uh, is replace uh, it it adds this play button there to tell you a song is playing on SoundCloud. Another form of delighter is things you discover more like Easter eggs. Uh, a very common or very widely known example is the Kickstarter scissor. If you see, there's a there's a scissor in on on uh, top left. So this is, these are screenshots of Kickstarter footer. If you go down on, on to the footer of Kickstarter, you would see the scissor. You click the scissor, it will move forward. You click again, again it will move forward. On the third click possibly, a whole new section uh, would show up, which will, which will just have a, have a witty, funny copy there. Eureka, you found our little secret. So why don't you sign up for our newsletter? Which I think is really kick-ass. It makes you feel nice, it makes you 
makes you feel like you've discovered some kind of little treasure there. So these are these are possibly the ten things which uh, I think can very quickly uh, you know improve your user experience to a great extent. Uh, to be very fair, likewise you can have close to five hundred different things which can improve your user experience. But I think these ten are really common and should help most of us. Uh, so uh, I know I'm sounding very generic right here, but this was the idea to kind of help most of the people here. Uh, about me, thank you. Uh, like Priyanka had introduced, uh, I run a small design, uh, branding, and UX design company called Spuffy. We are also working on a on a on a product called Seven Days of Work, which as of now uh, wants to be a, a social network, a professional network for for creative people. Uh, that's about the presentation. Uh, I think I've tried to save a lot of time here, even though I was 10, 10 minutes late. So I guess we should move to the questions. Right, Priyanka? Yeah. So that was a great session. Thank you so much, Himanshu, for sharing your knowledge with us so freely. I'm sure you guys have questions. Most welcome to them. So please press, press the raise hand button on your control panel to ask your question or you can type it in the chat box below. So you can note what you've missed. Okay. So Nikhil uh, Lada asked, he, he would like to note it again if he's missed something. So would you like to just give a quick recap Himanshu? Okay. Sure. Just the pointers. Right. So the first point is specify the user. Uh, we need to figure out who you're talking to, who's your end user for your product or service. Second is try and be human. Don't be a machine. Don't be technical. Try and have have a you know nice human side to it. Third is try and add humor wherever possible. Be a little quirky. Have a little personality there. Fourth, the most important point of all after the user is of course cut and remove the non-essential, the not needed parts. Fifth is to forgive mistakes because it's the human at the end of the day who is going through it. Sixth is to allow people to install habits, have a small learning curve so that they, pick, they start owning your system, they start owning your product. Seventh is automate user points, suggest uh, you know, kind of start having your uh, basic things which are being taken care of. Ninth is consistent experience all throughout. So uh, you need to figure out how is it looking on your app, on your web, and you know, on even on the outer world which is non-digital. And tenth is try and delight your users as much as possible. Now I don't know how many of you actually made it a point. But if you try and understand, there are actually just nine points, not ten. Nine steps to uh, to improve your user experience, not ten. How many of you noted it? I guess not many of them actually noted it. So um, I hope I Nikhil that answers your question, and you he actually did run you through all the points. So we have another question by Ayush Mehra. He asked, what do colors make mm -hmm. differences in UX? Uh, so to give you a real life example, uh, Ayush, right? Uh, you need to figure out, uh, just try and think in, in your normal day, uh, how do you feel, feel uh, in a day time when the sun is out there or how do you feel when it's raining and the weather is, you know, all grey and dark, and how do you feel in in the night? Uh, if you try and understand, this is not just because of uh, not just because of the weather or you know how you're feeling about the whole time. It is also to do with how the colors around you play at that point of time. In the night, if there is no electricity, which is a very common thing here in Delhi, uh, it's going to be a very very dull affair. Same goes. For a for a gloomy gray day where you know you have lots of lots of mess and uh, those kind of things around on a bright sunny day you feel feel a little cheerful, right? So it's 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 the real life examples which will eventually tell you what works and why it doesn't work. 
or additionally another thing which works or doesn't work in your favor is to understand why a, a certain color is unique to you and how it is unique to you for example using the same facebook color on every other application might not be the best thing you can do to yourself it will just end up making you seem like another you know uh, another product out of facebook and not have a unique identity to yourself so very quickly these are the things i can tell you about uh, you know usage of colors and user experience okay very well answered himanshu um okay. is there another question that you have okay so we have another question by anubhav tiwari he asked are we going to have a sequel to this webinar on how to get to these 10 things sounds easy but must be a deal so sequel i i'm not really sure of okay so uh, how to how to get to these things uh, you i mean wherever you think you're stumbling anywhere why don't you just you know try and email me and i'll try to help you as much as possible right that's why kind of you himanshu so we have another question by vinay he asked is it necessary to go with the latest design trends uh, example fad design approach is it important that you know people should follow the latest trend that that are going on in the market uh, not at all in fact as much as possible don't do that do it only if it helps your user experience do it only if Uh, you want to make some certain someone feel better for example the investors but other than that don't ever do that for example uh, a good friend of mine uh, prashant he gave uh, he gave a good example of how skeuomorphism has helped a lot of apps in you know shortening the learning curve so it's not always the you know the fight between different trends or flat versus skeuomorphism and those kind of things the only thing you need to understand and realize is what works the best for your particular product or service right um so we have another question by abhijit sandil he asks how do you identify if the design or the particular ui is suitable for your need what is the best practice to recognize them or uh, the best pr- practice to recognize anything is it suitable for you or not is to put it out uh see how is your, how your user you identified who is not your friend who is not your best friend who is not you yourself is trying to interact with it and don't make it like a focus group session or something you are trying to track uh, knowingly because in known situations people behave different than uh, the unknown uh, unrecorded situations so you have to figure out ways to see how people behave in the real world in real scenario with the your real how your real users are behaving with that particular thing okay very well answered himanshu so we have another question by sudhir porwal he asked what is your point of view on changing user experiences example new look of gmail yahoo and flickr etc but in the basic functionality of the system is the same Uh, so i would rather call it the evolution of user experience or evolution of that particular product because uh, you have to understand the only thing which is constant is the change and if you keep your product all the same all throughout its life cycle it's very soon it's going to become dull and boring take take it as yourself you wouldn't want to wear the same clothes every day every hour everything every time right you wouldn't want to repeat the same word or same sentence all the time you wouldn't want to eat the same food all the time so things have to evolve things have to change things have to improve so what what these particular services and products are trying to do is just evolve try and figure out new user patterns new user behaviors and you know put them in practice and make make it all the more useful for you so that's evolution right yes fair point himanshu uh nikhil again has a question he wants to ask why do you think all these social networking sites like facebook and linkedin are dumping their screens with lots of information at the same time and why don't they keep it so simple but still they happen to you know work in a big way so it's all a little confusing uh why because most of us i wouldn't say you or me 
or anyone around us, but most of us are content hungry. Uh, most of us lack uh, lack time. Most of us lack patience. So uh, we, as product owners or service owners, tend to think, which might not be true, but tend to think that the more we show, there's more chance of people, uh, you know, owning that particular content or making use of that particular content which is as good as you know me sharing 10 points here rather than just sharing two points so tomorrow one could question me that why did you share so many points in you you know when you could have just shared two points and talked at length about them so that's that's a that's a choice these these services and products are making as of now but you can answer them uh, the way you behave with that particular service uh, maybe not just you but as a collective sum of all the users who are there so we guys can kind of you know try and change those things and things are changing for example the newer services like medium and those kinds of things are trying to cut as much as possible they are trying to make it as simple as possible i mean if you look at a certain medium post or a blog you would know what i'm talking about there's i mean there's very few elements in the whole thing and very less content so you should probably check it out Right. I'm sure your answer must have helped him. So we have another question by Ayush Mehra and he asks, if I'm making an app, what color contrast should I use so that my app is having best UI and UX in all daytime? Uh, Ayush, that's a, that's a super trick question, man. I don't know. I, I'm guessing the app is, uh, is for me and I am the user because you're asking this question to me. Uh, and not the actual user. Uh, so if the app is for me, I would I would prefer it to have uh, more of white, more of lighter tones. But uh, at the same time, the content should the darker tones to give it a good contrast, especially in the daytime with so much bright light out there, and not keep it quite on lighter grays and all that when it comes to the text or the specific parts. And also try and use the you know normal norms of color design where we we happen to think as a user behavior that red is for no and green is for yes. So try and evolve out of those things. Again, uh, instead of asking this to yourself or asking this to me, I think it will be better if you try and study your particular user for that app until unless again you're getting into the whole curse of knowledge thing where you think I am your user, you you are your own user. Okay, very well answered Himanshu as usual. So there is another question by uh, Puneet. He asks, how much difference will it make to a user if the interface is changed at quick intervals, say in every two, three months? That's a phenomenal question actually. Uh, I would again blame it on the users. Uh, I would uh, see on, on on a certain lazy laid back user, it could mean that this is trying to kill the learning curve they have had in the past and you know it is making them relearn again which is such a big task. Uh, to enthusiastic uh, learned users who want to try newer things in life, this could be this could be a blessing in disguise where you know you're trying to evolve the whole thing all over again, giving them a new feel, a new world. So for, for such users, it's like you know finding a new earth and trying to uh, start a new new population there. So some would like it, some wouldn't. Some would be just too lazy to move out of their home and think about going to a new planet and you know resetting it. So that that is how it works. User is is the answer to almost everything. How they would behave is how they normally behave in their life. Indeed, user is the answer to everything. <laughs> in today's world. So uh, we have another question by Anamika and she asks, how do you apply these learnings in your work life? At Spartan, how do we apply? Yes. Uh, to be very honest, these are the learnings we have got out of, you know, trying different options uh, and, you know, analyzing the results which have been out there. So not that from, from day one, uh, we were you know uh, designing the experience for the user no we were not like everyone else we began with the same same proposition that we are the user or someone sitting in front of me is the user or, you know this uncle I know who works at that government 
uh, office is the user. But practically speaking, when we saw the results, that is when we started realizing that this is not how it how it works. And then through trial and errors, you know, experimenting with different methodologies, these are, I mean, these are the few things we learned. And because now we have learned it the hard way, we there is no other way we can work. So this is the only way we work. Okay, and uh, we have another question again on the relevance of colors. So uh, Prakash Bhol again asked, does it matter, uh, you know, does color matter in UX and is there a specific reason why we should choose blue color instead of pink? You know, he's, I think he's just trying to give an example here, but he wants to know more about the relevance of color in UX. Yep, your color matters a lot. I mean, uh, to think of it, uh, color is the essence of human existence, right? Uh, if there were no colors, our, our uh, eyesight would be as good as a dog. Dogs can't really see colors, they only see tones. Uh, so colors do have a lot of, you know, uh, feeling propositions uh, on our mind, on our behavior. So yes, it's a big part of user experience. Uh, blue versus pink as a common norm is like boys versus girls. But then it also depends on different tones. For example, a certain sky blue could also be used for a girl or a certain, you know, dark uh, pink or an edgy pink or a rust pink or those kind of colors could also be used for boys, it depends. So when we think of colors, we are not just thinking of colors in US, UX, we are also thinking of how they would be used, where they would be used, uh, their tonalities, uh, the kind of percentage of that color which will be used. For example, the whole app could be, you know, have a white background and only the text would be a dark pink. So, I mean, you know. So it also depends on where and how are you using it and you know in what quantity, which tones and what what are the other secondary colors in the same palette. So it's it's a whole combination. Okay. Thank you so much again, uh, Himanshu. So we have another question. So a lot of people have questions actually to you. So Puneet says, if I'm making a website followed by an app, should I differentiate between users in India and users abroad on what they would like to see and what delights them? Who is your primary user? Indians or the people abroad? That should help you choose. It doesn't matter if it's a website or an app. Just focus on that one user. I'm not talking about users. Just focus on one user. Make everything you're making for that one user. Go meet that user if you have to go to Japan or uh, Brazil. But know them. Know them really well and focus only on them. And well made, Himanshu. So um, we have another question by Mohit Singhanya. He asked, what is the most important thing for better user experience, design or the content? Mm. Content, because design is more like an enhancer. And when, I, when we say design, design is a very common term. I think what he means is the, the interface or the artwork or you know, the visual. Uh, I think content makes more sense because uh, people can't can't just you know keep looking at a at a certain app which is full of colors or different elements and you know, where to go. Content is more or less the story. So any movie or anything first needs the story and then how well it's picturized, right? So focus on the content first. I very well said. So uh, I think this should be our last question. And if you have any more questions, we are actually running short on time. So I would request you all to send those questions by mail at webinars at srijan.in and we will get them answered by Himanshu for you. So I'm just going to take one last question with you, Himanshu. And it is, mm -hmm. what do you think about Windows 8 theme and the slogan, everything at once? It is a lot of information, but in such a simple way. Okay, can you repeat it? Because this was a very long question. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, Nikhil Lada asked, what do you think about the Windows 8 theme and your slogan? Everything at once. So, it's a lot of information, but they have actually put it 
in a very simple way. Because it's put simply, uh, it's nice, but I think it's a little too generic right now, and it's it's a little over promising here because when you say everything at once, so everything is making your mind go really creative and run wild. So everything could mean different things for different people. So not really a fan. It's just what it makes me say. Yeah. Okay, so all right then. Um, I would once again request you all to please send in your suggestions and feedback, and if you have any more questions, to mail us at webinars at srijan dot in. Thank you once again, Himanshu, for answering all the questions very patiently, and we are sure everyone found your presentation very interesting and insightful. And thank you everyone for thank you everyone for joining us in this webinar. And I would also like to announce that our next webinar is on digital marketing for customer acquisition by Pradeep Chopra, co-founder and CEO of Digital Vidya on 5th February. For registrations, you will be getting a mail from our site or you can directly register at Srijan's website. And a lot of people are thanking you, uh, Himanshu, in the chat as well. So have a great day. Thank you once again for joining you us. You too, all of you. Yeah.